Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of Impact Books. Today we are reviewing what is quite possibly my favorite book of all time. It certainly had a massive impact on my life and it's called The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. It was actually originally recorded as an interview series between journalist Bill Moyers and Joseph Campbell, the preeminent scholar of comparative religion and mythology. And I've had the great pleasure of reading both the physical book and listening to the original recordings. And I have to say, there's really no substitute for hearing the author's voice, especially because the book was pulled from the very conversational interview, which was recorded not too long before Campbell's death. I read the book about 17 years ago and it left an indelible mark on me, figuratively and quite literally. And I credit this book not only to planting the seed in my mind that would ultimately blossom into impact theory, but I also credit it with setting up my marriage on solid ground. In many ways, this book makes up the very foundation of my entire life philosophy. And the reason for that is it made very clear to me that residing within mythology and ritual are the universal in fact, the elemental truths of the human experience. The Power of Myth was published by Penguin Random House, boys and girls, and I owe you guys a huge debt of gratitude for this one, so thank you. Impactful idea number one, the elemental truths. While the particulars vary from culture to culture, the underlying meaning behind mythology points to absolutely universal things about the human condition. Myths help us codify and understand the world around us. They are the human mind's attempt to make sense of things like life and death, the duality of the voices in our head, love and hate, pain and bliss, and it's not just the dualities, but myths also help us understand things for which we just don't have any words. They help us come to grips with the truths that are simply outside of the realm of language. Said another way, mythology helps us structure our lives and our thought patterns. The lessons that they teach us on how to live, act, and think really help us to understand our own existence. And to paraphrase Campbell, mythology is the poetry that pushes our mind beyond what we can represent with words and into the world that can be known but never told. In other words, they capture what you feel but can't explain. Being able to grab a hold of the ineffable and make it concrete and something that then you can use as a filter for how to live your life really is the very power of mythology and why I am so obsessed and why I think quite frankly that it's important at this moment in society that we get a better grip on mythology. Impactful idea number two, follow your bliss. All right, this is probably the most famous thing that Joseph Campbell ever said, and I think that his famous quote remains incredibly relevant today. And the full quote goes like this, follow your bliss and doors will open where there were no doors before. This is very similar to the concept of following your passion, but I think his slight variation in choice of words actually carries some really useful meaning to people. And what he was talking about when he says to follow your bliss is to do that which makes you feel most alive. And that sense of doing what makes you feel most alive to me is probably the most useful definition of passion or bliss that's available. Impactful idea number three. There is a lack of modern mythology and a serious lack of meaningful ritual to help people with the transitional moments in life. Now when Moyers asks Joseph Campbell what a world without mythology would look like, Campbell tells him simply to look around at the world that he's living in. Because we are going through an age without effective mythology. And when pressed, however, Campbell says that he believes that Star Wars actually is pretty relevant modern mythology, but, and he points out a really critical problem, and that is, that people know that the story is fiction, and without the cloak of mystery that made ancient mythology so compelling to people, the modern mythology is always going to struggle to have an impact on our lives. That notion is exactly what planted the seed in my mind about impact theory, because I totally agree with Campbell. The problem isn't mythology, we're really good at creating mythology. The problem is that we don't know how to interpret and use mythology in our lives. And if you look at the sheer volume of morality-based stories pouring out of the comic book, film, and TV worlds, you can see that the problem isn't just getting myth. The problem is really ritualizing it, using it as a filter, and understanding how to actually live our lives. And because of that, people don't know how to absorb the teachings. And I think that the modern equivalent of ritual 
is ritualized skill acquisition and the expression of those skills in service of something larger than oneself. So if you're wondering what's driving the ideology and content creation behind impact theory, it's this very idea. We live in a postmodern world where ancient myths seem somewhat absurd, people don't believe in them, the world is changing so fast that no myth has any hope of becoming ritualized. And when you start thinking about needing the rituals in order to cross into a new phase in life or to really understand how to live one's life, we all come up wanting. So that to me is something that's really critical right now that we all have to take on the burden ourselves is understanding how to cross from childhood into adulthood or from single life into marriage. And that's why I think people have to really refocus on mythology and they have to understand how to interpret it as a way to live. Boiling down any book into the impactful quotes is always part of the fun for me, but it's also brutally difficult, especially this book. You really can't imagine how many quotes from this book reside in my mind, how many of them have become part of the very fabric of how I live. But here are the three that I've chosen. Number one, people say what we're all seeking is a meaning for life, but I don't think that's what we're really seeking. I think what we're seeking is the experience of truly being alive. This goes back to this concept of following your bliss, of finding that thing that really lights you on fire, that makes you feel alive, that is just from a neurochemistry standpoint exciting, and that is such a great marker for people to use to guide them through their lives and really is one of the most enduring things to come out of this book, not just for me, but for the world at large. When people talk about this book, that's the quote that they cite. Impactful quote number two, myth is a manifestation in symbolic images, in metaphorical images of the energies of the organs of the body in conflict with each other. This organ wants this, that organ wants that. The brain is one of those organs. All right, to me, this sums up my entire life. Literally, mythology is us trying to come to terms with that war that's going on inside of us, with the desire to be lazy and stay in bed, and yet at the same time to go and accomplish great things. And it really is mythology that helps us make sense of all of the conflicting ideas and desires that we have within ourselves, and it puts it into a narrative. And that narrative makes the incredibly complicated and complex experience of being a human tangible and understandable. Impactful quote number three, and I want you guys to really pay attention to this one. The greater life's pain, the greater life's reply. I absolutely love this quote because I think the thing in life that people succumb to is pain. I think that so much of the trouble that people get into is either trying to avoid pain or trying to mask pain rather than dealing with it. And what I think Campbell makes incredibly clear here is that if you can fight through that pain, if you can endure that on the other side of that, especially when you put it into the context of this man being just a student of mythology, that on the other side of that hero's journey, no matter how painful it is, is a response from life about who you are and what you're truly capable of. So rather than looking for a way out, find that way through to reveal who you really are. All right, there are so many amazing quotes and ideas in this book. Be sure to go to impacttheory.com for more quotes from this book that should be lodged deep inside your mind. The part about reading a book, quite frankly, and the book reviews that's the most important to me, how am I going to use this in my life? All right, with this one, as Pete Carroll says, you need a life philosophy, a belief system that informs your everyday decisions. The power of myth in no uncertain terms helped me define mine. It's touched every aspect of my life, from my marriage to my business. It's helped me identify my bliss and find the structure I needed to grow together with my wife over time. It's informed my writing. It's given voice to the impact that I wanna have on this world. It is quite simply part of the foundation of my entire belief system. And while I can't say that this book is the most important book for everybody to read, I can say that it's the book that's impacted me the most. Partly because I read it at a time that was very formative in my life, and partly because it's just that badass. And I'm really a little bit mortified by this book review because this book has given so much to my life and I don't feel like I have adequately captured how effective it is at helping you understand 
life, at helping you understand pain, at helping you understand narrative and yourself and all of the conflict that you're going to go through. This book breaks it down by looking globally at all the mythologies and stories that we tell ourselves across cultures and it really shows how the human experience just isn't that different. And at a time where it seems like people are more divided than ever, this book is something that's really going to show you we just aren't that different. That the experience, no matter where you are, no matter where you grow up, no matter the particulars of the stories that your culture has told, there are fundamental, elemental truths that live underneath that, that inform and explain the human experience. I really hope you guys will enjoy this book as much as I have. And as always, there just are way too many concepts and things for me to cover in this. So please, this is not an appeal for you to have watched this and feel like you read the book. This is an appeal for you to go and actually read the book. And go to impacttheory.com. You can find more insights, rants, quotes, all kinds of good stuff, which will hopefully make the book come more alive to you guys. All right, I want to leave you guys with one last quote. You must have a room or a certain hour or so a day where you don't know what was in the newspapers that morning, you don't know who your friends are, you don't know what anybody owes you. This is a place where you can simply experience and bring forth what you are and what you might be. This is the place of creative incubation. At first, you might find that nothing happens there. But if you want to hear the rest of that quote, you guys are going to have to read the book, and I hope that you do. This one is going to change you if you let it. All right, guys, this is a weekly show, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care.